I will never change uh, in my basic idea that nonviolence is the most potent weapon available to the Negro in his struggle for freedom and justice. I think for the Negro to turn to violence would be both impractical and immoral. There is an increasingly vocal minority who disagree totally with your tactics, Dr. King. There's no doubt about that. I will agree that uh, there is a, a group in the Negro community advocating violence now. I happen to feel that this group represents a numerical minority. Surveys have revealed this. But the vast majority of Negroes still feel that the best way to deal with the dilemma that we face in this country is uh, through nonviolent resistance. And uh, I don't think this vocal group will be able uh, to make a real dent in the Negro community in terms of swaying 22 million Negroes to this particular point of view. And I contend that the cry of black power is at bottom a reaction to the reluctance of white power to make the kind of changes necessary to make justice a reality for the Negro. I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the economic plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last few years. How many summers like this one do you imagine that we can expect? Well, I would say this, we don't have long. The mood of the Negro community now is one of urgency, one of saying that we aren't going to wait, that we've got to have our freedom. We've waited too long. So that uh, I would say that every summer we are going to have this kind of vigorous protest. My hope is that it will be nonviolent. I would hope that we can avoid riots because riots are self-defeating and socially destructive. I would hope that we can avoid riots, but that we will be as militant and as determined next summer and through the winter uh, as we have been this summer. And I think the answer about how long it will take will depend on the federal government, on the city halls of our various cities, and on white America to a large extent. This is where we are at this point, and I think white America will determine how long it will be and which way we go in the future. Even Senator Jacob Javits asked the question recently. He said that he was a slum resident, but he and some of his fellow Jews were able to make it out of the ghetto on the Lower East Side. The same thing is true with lots of Irish, Italians. And he asked the question why the Negro finds it so difficult to make his way up out of the ghetto. You well, did. Number one, no other racial group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, it's nice to say other people were down and they got up. They were not slaves on American soil. The other thing is that the Negro has had high visibility. And because of the prejudices existing in this country, his color has been against him. It's been against him, uh, and they've used this to keep him from moving up. In the final analysis, when you say to a man that you are in this position because of your race or because of your color, you say to that man that he can never get out of it. Other racial groups have been able maybe to change the accent or change the names, but the Negro can't. 